it's Gabrielle, and this video is a sample from StudyClicks Boost, our new rapid revision tool. Go to studyclicks.ie forward slash boost to find out more. Hey folks. So here we're going to be looking at exponential functions and log functions very briefly. Now you look at both of these in more detail during your algebra section if you wish. But here we're just going to be looking primarily at the shape of the graph. So an exponential function, we're thinking of rates of growth, as in bacteria, or rates of decay, as in maybe carbon-14 in our body. So rapid increase or rapid decrease in values of something. So an exponential function is the form y is equal to a times b to the power of x. And when it's in this certain form, a is known as the y-intercept, or where it cuts that y-axis or where it intersects that y-axis. B is known as me base, and x is known as the exponent of the power. Now the x-axis, swanky term alert, is known to be an asymptote to exponential functions. And what I mean by an asymptote means a line that it does not cross. Thou shall not cross the x-axis, the exponential uh, function doesn't. Now, linking in to that, y is equal to a, b, x. As well, show it to you for the crack. It says a is known as the y-intercept. So, think two functions from your junior cert and from the leaving cert cuts the y-axis when x is equal to zero. So if I sub in zero for my x, anything to the power of zero is one. So if I put five to the power of zero in my calculator, I get one. If I put in five, 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 six, to the power of zero, I get one. Anything to the power of zero is one. Even if I slip in a wee minus before that, Oh, I need my brackets around it, sorry. Just to show you I'm not pulling the wool over your eyes. I also get one as well. So all I do is replace this with one. Y is equal to A. And to write that as a point, my X is zero. My Y value is A. So if that was two times B to the power of X, where it cuts the Y axis would be zero two. Just a fun alert for you there. Now, we'll have a look at graphing two exponential functions to give you the general shape of the curve. And we'll graph two similar looking exponential functions, 2 to the power of x and 2 times 2 to the power of x. So get your calculators out, get ready to do your mode 3, and we'll see what sort of shape of a curve we get. Now, the first one we'll draw, I've just got my wee axis teed up for myself, is f of x equal to 2 to the power of x. So calculator out, and go to mode, and 3, type it in your function, it's 2 to the power of x. And here, all we're doing is alpha in the right bracket. We're going from minus 3 to 3, it said, in the domain. So start at minus 3, press equals, end at 3, and we'll go up in 1s. So we're going to minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And that spits out this. Not great looking, but we can see it's going to increase rapidly. So we'll plot these points, minus 3, approximately, we'll throw in where an 8th is, or 0.125. It's where the bigger values is that we'll see the shape of the curve just shoot up. So minus 3 and 0.125, somewhere down there. So each box I have represents 2, so it's a sixteenth of the way up there. Next one's a quarter, just a wee bit above it. Now we're at minus 1.5, still not making great inwards. Move on down, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, and 3, 8. And my general shape of an exponential curve, join it up in a nice smooth curve, looks like that. And that'll keep increasing 2 to the power of 4, giving me my 16, 2 to the power of 5, giving me 32, if I so wished. And on, 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 on. That's f of x. We can see there, again, cuts the y axis when x is equal to 0. So we have 2 to the power of 0, which is 1, hence why that point was 0, 1. So my y-intercept there being 0, 1. We'll now have a look at 2 times 2 to the power of x. So clear that, you can type it in again, or if you wish, 2 outside it, put your brackets around it then. So we're just simply multiplying that by 2. Start at minus 3 again, end at a 3, steps of 1, and here we go, doubling each of these values up. So a quarter, a half, and 1, just roughly down here. 0, 2, 4, 8, and 16. And again, join that up in a nice smooth curve. 
that's my function g of x. So it's going up twice as quick. Also the y-intercept, cutting it instead of at 0, 1, it's cutting it at 0, 2. The reason it's cutting it at 0, 2, I'll do it in red. So the function is y is equal to 2 times 2 to the power of x, cuts the y-axis when x is equal to 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1, y is equal to 2. And remember that point as an x, y, x is 0, y is equal to 2. So that's our exponential functions. We see that none of the values go through that x-axis. It's known as an asymptote. And they increase rapidly when the number, if it was 3 times 2 to the power of x, it goes up again. So very easy to put into your calculator. It's just a similar setup. Just make sure you know the power button. Now if we look at a log function, just the general shape of it. So on a log function, the y-axis is an asymptote. So it's an inverse of an exponential function. It's the opposite of an exponential function. So an exponential function, the x-axis was the asymptote. In a log function, the y-axis is the asymptote. So it never cuts through the y-axis. And log functions, as I said there, are the inverse of exponential functions. So I'll have a wee sketch of one um, just to show you that. So here we can see the exponential function in red shooting up rapidly. And the inverse of that, the ln of function, the natural log function, or log to the base e function, just reflected in the line y is equal to x. So an inverse just reflected in the line y is equal to x, and the y-axis there acting as an asymptote. Never touches it, never goes through it, but gets closer and closer to the y-axis. And this exponential function, the y-intercept of it, 0, 1, whereas down here, where it cuts the x-axis will be 1, 0. Just the inverse, flipped around the values.